Imagine this. You're standing on the surface of the Earth 10,000 years ago. Vast forests, pristine grasslands. The air is pure. The land untouched. Then something remarkable happened. Humans invented agriculture. And in the blink of an eye, in the grand scheme of time, we occupied about half the habitable land on the planet. It allows us to feed billions, but in doing so, we've gutted the natural world and warmed the planet. This process is the second largest source of global warming and the leading cause of a projected mass extinction event. Just over the last 50 years, 73% of the wild populations on average have declined. 73% in half a century. It's been estimated that one million species are under threat of extinction. My personal experience growing up was quite different. I spent the first 12 years of my life in a tropical forest, sharing it with thousands of species of animals and plants. From my window, I could see sloths eating through my favorite tree, and once I saw a mother jaguar and two baby cubs lapping water from that stream. But here's what's truly remarkable. I didn't live in the deep of the Amazon. This forest was inside Rio, one of the world's largest cities. And even more fascinating, much of this complex ecosystem used to be a co coffee plantation less than a century ago. But over the past decades, through a combination of human efforts and natural regeneration, the forest came back. At every corner, Rio provided proofs that we could restore our harmony with nature. But while Rio forests were thriving, the largest Atlantic forest biome had lost 85% of its natural cover. Without restoration, thousands of species would go extinct, and the life support system providing food, water, and habitable conditions to two-thirds of Brazil's population would be at risk. I wanted to replicate what initial heroic efforts had done for a few thousand hectares and scale them up to the millions needed to avert that crisis. So I threw myself into science, teaming up with brilliant colleagues at the International Institute for Sustainability and elsewhere to figure out how to scale restoration. We tapped into machine learning and developed algorithms to identify the best places to restore. The results were breathtaking. We found that with smart planning, we could make restoration six times more cost-effective. That's six times more impact for every dollar invested. But science alone wouldn't change the world. So we went to policymakers and helped them develop Brazil's national restoration plan. It wasn't a theoretical exercise. It became law and committed the country to restoring 12 million hectares, an area the size of England. Then, at the request of the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, we generalized our scientific approach to cover all ecosystems on Earth and deliver the first global analysis of priority areas for restoration. The results were astounding. We found that if we restored 30% of low productivity degraded lands worldwide, we would capture 465 billion tons of CO2. 
that's about half the amount of CO2 that has accumulated in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. At the same time, we would avert 71% of that mass extinction event. That target became part of the Global Biodiversity Framework, signed by 196 countries in 2022. And now we had that 1 billion hectare global target to restore the planet. But frustratingly, despite all the science and ambitious policies, restoration in Brazil was still proceeding at that few thousand hectares per year pace. Back to the drawing board. The challenge was, could we devise a process that would scale it up, not to thousands of hectares, but to millions, and attract billions of dollars in finance? I took inspiration from the unlikeliest source the very process that was destroying Brazil's nature, the profitable agribusiness. Could we create a paradigm shift after centuries creating wealth out of nature's destruction? Could we devise a profitable, scalable business case out of restoring nature? This thinking gave birth to regreen a B Corp designed to change the rules of the game. Our mission is ambitious, but straightforward, to deliver one million hectares of what the Society for Ecological Restoration calls a five-star restoration. This isn't about planting a few trees and walking away. It's about restoring native ecosystems, their structure, their functioning, Crucially, their resilience for the long term. Fun fact, when asked about the ambitious scope we wanted to achieve, I looked in front of my monitor, and this was my wallpaper. And according to NASA, one million hectares is what you need to do to be visible from a naked eye from the moon. That very scientific way was where the one million hectare came uh, to fruition. But how do you fund restoration at this scale? The answer lies in combining cutting-edge technologies with market-driven solutions. Optimization algorithms allow us to identify for each farm in Brazil multiple variables that allow us to analyze their potential for this project. Then other set of algorithms identify inside that farm the ideal blend of restoration methods, further increasing cost effectiveness. We tapped into emerging 21st century markets for carbon and biodiversity and combined them with ancient but steady markets for forest products. The results speak for themselves. In just under two years, Regreen has secured hundreds of billions of dollars in investments and commercial agreements. Our projects span tens of thousands of hectares. Since the day we planted the first tree, other 15 million ones have begun to grow in our projects. And the plan is to double the pace every two years towards that one million hectare. And here's a truly exciting part. Our projects are proving that restoration can outcompete some of the most widespread land uses. Cattle ranching occupies 70% of the forested lands in Brazil and in the world. Investors would receive double-digit rates of return. But this is not only about numbers. These projects are bringing life back to devastated areas, improving water quality, protecting biodiversity, and supporting local communities. They also carry powerful messages. These trees 
are being planted in a UNESCO natural heritage site called the Discovery Coast. Questionably named because it was the very place where Europeans first set foot in America's South America in 1500. What followed was a genocide of the indigenous people and the destruction of nature. Now, from a tree nursery, we help them to set up. Their descendants are providing us the seedlings we're using to restore that land, a project we call the Recovery Coast. But this challenge is much larger than regreen, and gladly the sector is flourishing with other initiatives and models, and we all need and can learn together. There's so much information coming from state-of-the-art monitoring systems. That's why from 2025 we'll be setting up an open science initiative, turning all these interventions into enormous integrated field experiments tapping into multiple academic fields and AI to learn with nature how best to tap into its power to overcome global challenges. We welcome contributors and partners from around the globe. In these bleak times, let's take inspiration from nature's resilience and these success stories and meet the targets we already agreed on for which science shows they are possible, for which supporting policies are in place, and viable, proved business cases are being implemented. After 10,000 years of relentless destruction, let's bring about this historic turning point in our journey and be the first generation to leave our planet better than we encounter it. Thank you.